Hey everybody, thank you for watching today. Welcome to Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. This is a show where we take really big topics and break them down over the course of a whole week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss all of the episodes. Today, we're going to clear up some misconceptions people have about their senses. In case you didn't catch it, this is Sense Week. Maybe you, maybe you smelt that one coming. Uh, the first sense we are going to talk about might be a shocker. There are all these senses that we wish existed or that some people think exist, but they don't. The most shocking one is the sense of wetness. You think that you can sense water. You do. You're wrong. You can't actually sense how wet something is. We can't feel wetness. We do not have receptors for it. If you think about being in the shower, you're feeling the pressure of the water hitting you. You're feeling the temperature of that water. You're feeling and experiencing all of these things. You know what you're not experiencing? How wet that water is. Technically, hot water is less dense than cold water and should have a different wetness feeling, maybe, because there's more water hitting you. You can't tell. We have no wetness receptors. When you put your hand into a, a pool, you're not sensing for how wet the pool is. You're sensing for the temperature of the water. You could towel off after a shower and find drops of water on your skin and not know the difference because they're not exhibiting enough pressure to trigger your pressure sensors, and they're the same temperature as your body, so you don't even know they're there. When you sweat, sometimes you can't tell until it tickles your body because it's triggering other sensors. We know wetness is there because we combine all of these different senses. We cannot feel water. That's so messed up. Another sense that we wish existed uh, that doesn't is X-ray vision. The human eye can see the visible spectrum, which in the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible spectrum is a little teeny itty bitty part of that. Ranging from extreme low frequency, which is a few hertz or cycles per second, to radio, microwave, then infrared, and then we get visible. And we get Roy G. Biv, and then it's ultraviolet. <laughs> it's that small. Roy G. Biv is the beginning, is just at the edge of infrared. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, ultraviolet. Then we go to X-ray, and ultraviolet we can't see, obviously, that's UV rays. X-rays we also cannot see. And then gamma rays, which are 300 exahertz, or like millions of hertz per second. To be able to have x-ray vision would be awesome, not possible, uh, but we'd have to also be able to see, chances are, UV light, because you can't skip over that part of the EM spectrum in order to see x-rays. And x-rays like UV light, gamma radiation, micro and radio waves are just energy traveling through space. When it comes to visible light, our eyes know how to absorb that and process it. If we could also process ultraviolet and x-ray light, first of all, the world would look way cooler. I mean, way cooler. You can see x-ray telescopes. You can see ultraviolet telescopes. You can see infrared telescopes. Look it up on the Googles. It's awesome. But it would kind of be complicated for me walking around to be able to see UV light shooting down from the sky and x-rays flying around. And you know all of that would be very confusing visually. Plus, you'd be able to see through people's everything. It'd be like walking around with skeletons everywhere. That'd be, that'd be really weird. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really that into that. Uh, but there are people that want that. There are also senses where people think that twins have an extrasensory connection. I mean, ESP in general is interesting because people think it exists. It does not exist. Uh, I could go into a whole thing on why it doesn't exist. It, it just doesn't. Yes, sometimes you know who's calling you and you answer your phone, or you're about to text your friend and they text you back. That's not ESP. It's a coincidence. If you hold up a card and you guess that card over and over again, if I hold a shape on the back of a card and you sitting on the front of the card can guess it over and over, maybe that's ESP. Maybe you're also just lucky. Go watch Ghostbusters. You'll figure it out. It doesn't exist. Twins think they have ESP, and anecdotal evidence supports that twins can tell when each other are in trouble. But that's always a story that you hear later, right? One twin gets in a car crash. The other twin says, man, I really had a sense of foreboding that day. That's not science. Sometimes twins will finish each other's sandwiches or sentences, sen you know, whatever. They also wear the same thing, stuff like that. That doesn't mean that they have some extrasensory perception. 
but tests done with twins show they don't. There is one thing, though, a deep emotional connection. But you can get that regardless of whether you're a twin. Uh, married couples will test very similarly on these kind of extrasensory tests as twins because they have deep emotional connections. There's also a sense of telepathy. Um, the movie The Shadow, a classic, also a radio show, really great, uh, talks about telepathy and telekinesis. It comes actually from a Victorian period where the rise of science uh, in the public eye also brought with it pseudoscience and spirituality. You know, mind bullets and picking things up. That's telekinesis, Kyle. Anyway, it's not real. There is some anecdotal evidence for it, similarly, similarly to the twin connections and ESP. Movies love it, science does not. We don't use 10% of our brains, which is the theme in every telekinesis telepathy movie. There's not a chunk of our brain that we are not tapping into that would give us telepathy. We're tapping into all of our brains. We can't turn on telepathy, we use 100% of our brain. If you walk away from this week of episodes with one thing, please, we use 100% of our brains. We have more than five senses, that's two things, but still. We have created brain-to-brain -brain computer interfaces though. Using technology, you can actually take thoughts, I'm using finger quotes for those listening, uh, that is a whole other thing though. We can take those thoughts and we can transmit them over the internet and put them onto someone else's brain using transcranial magnetic stimulation, and then they can feel something that someone else is feeling far, far away, 5,000 miles away in the case of one study. That's called hyperinteraction. And that's actually a whole other thing because using technology, the number of senses we have could be unlimited. So those are the senses that we don't have. Maybe you wish you did, but you don't. Tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about the senses that you can have, that you didn't even know you wanted. Your brain, turns out, is pretty much unlimited. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that episode, and go back and watch our other episodes if you haven't. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Trace, we'll see you tomorrow.